Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics. Last week, we brought you 10 back issues for champions. This week, we're hitting you with some DC comics, aren't we, Jack? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we got a few different properties, but we're going to keep that DC Comics feel rolling because there's a lot going on with DC Comics, both on the publishing side and the television side. That's got us real excited. Coming at that bottom spot, we get those before Watchmen and Cine variants. Yeah, now Watchmen is an interesting property because when I was growing up, all we ever heard was Alan Moore talk about how he never wanted to see more Watchmen. And then we got the Before Watchmen series and it was a huge flop. Uh, a lot of buzz, a lot of people excited, um, and it just didn't really deliver. And the funny thing is a lot of those stories are really great. A lot of variants are really awesome. I don't know why it didn't deliver. Um, looking back on it, uh, it's hard to kind of put myself in that moment um, and really, really remember. Uh, but since then, we've gotten a very, very successful um, Watchmen television show. And of course, the before Watchmen comics came on the heels of the Watchmen movie, which was when, you know, everything was kind of in people's public eye. Now, after this Watchmen television show, after a Rorschach new uh, solo series, and talks that there's going to be more Watchmen publishing from DC Comics, of course, we saw the Watchmen really cross over with the DC Universe in the Doomsday Clock series. So I'm real bullish on the Watchmen going forward. And one of the, 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 most, the most modern and the only modern Watchmen that you have is these before Watchmen series. And there are some incentives by some of the greatest artists in comics that are selling for a fifth of ratio, a fourth of ratio. I mean, I'm just talking about dirt, dirt cheap incentives. So now is a great time um, to really kind of like pick your favorite Watchmen character. If you're bullish on the future of Watchmen as a property, and uh, pick up some really dirt cheap incentives. Hitting us at that number nine spot. We're staying within that Watchmen family, but we're talking about Watchmen number six. Yeah, and I just mentioned the Rorschach solo series. This is something I'm really interested in. Um, the way that the Watchmen series was structured, the original OG, of course, we're talking about, we're talking about Alan Moore, that there were like individualized origin issues for most of the characters that really focused on that character's perspective. This is, of course, the Rorschach issue. You get the awesome Rorschach cover. You get uh, a Rorschach origin in there. Um, I think really, uh, other than Watchmen number one being the first appearance, this is kind of that next best book. We're starting to see some small spikes on it as the new Rorschach series starts. And when I say small spikes, I mean like this book was like a $5 book and you've seen some $10, $12 sales. But this is one to be on the lookout for because I really think Rorschach is a great character. And I, like I said, I'm, I'm bullish about, about the Watchmen in the future. Um, you know, we'll have to see how others feel, but let us know how you feel in the comment section. But this is one to pay attention to both short term and long term. Yeah, no doubt. I think that new Rorschach series is going to be great, and it's going to make people go back and look for those older issues as well. Here we are at the number eight spot, and we're getting Wonder Woman Annual number four. That's right, and this is, of course, from the current 2016 run. And here we're going to talk a little bit about DC Publishing. Now, we just talked about that Rorschach number one, but we just got an announcement in the last 24 hours of a future program from DC Comics called DC Future Slate. Now, this is one that I can go ahead and speak for Brian and say we're excited for because we were one of the few, uh, one of the proud who were all on board for uh, uh, 5G. That we, we believe that, that one of the keys to the superhero universe is, it, is showing the future, aging up these characters. It's great to introduce all these children characters, but if they don't ever become adults, um, then we're always just projecting their future. And here we're going to get a glimpse inside the future of DC Comics with several one shots um, that will tell stories from all characters views and perspectives uh in the future and one of the things that we learned is who the new um wonder woman is that the new wonder woman is a brazilian woman um uh called yara flores uh flor uh, i'm probably mispronouncing that i apologize but uh she was first cameoed her her people and it's believed to be that she is the child that is in the splash page within this book here it's it's already been confirmed from steve orlando the writer that that this is the uh, the issue where the people were introduced. Um, and it's believed that the child who's playing with a jump rope as if it's a, uh, a, a lasso um, of truth is the child who grows up to become Wonder Woman. She definitely looks like it. Um, now, could this be one of those 
sketchy action comics Naomi series again? I, it, it could be, but either way, you get more credence because at least the, the, the person who's writing the book has come out and said like, yeah, this is an intentional introduction of these uh, Brazilian Amazonians, uh, you know, who will one day uh, have one of their own become Wonder Woman. So this is one to pay attention to, super under the radar at the moment. It's, this is breaking news. We are recording this um, Thursday night. This is just hitting Instagram and Twitter. People are starting to buy them up. I can still see copies everywhere for cover price. So this is one to pay attention to. And you know those annuals, they are smaller printed and like you, books that you like, Brian, usually only come with one cover. Coming at number seven, we're moving over into that Green Lantern universe. And we're talking about Sinestro number one. But we're talking about that one in 25 incentive. Yeah, so we're going to talk about a lot, a lot of Green Lantern stuff. Because Green Lantern and the Green Lanterns are coming to HBO Max. Now, we've talked about this. We've got a top five list already on the channel. You can check the description for the link for that. But here's the thing. that We got some inside info when this announcement was announced from HBO Max about like the characters that were going to be involved. So we already know, you know, that, and all of the excitement has shifted towards Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz. We've talked about that on three up three down and don't get me wrong. We're, we've got some nuggets of great information within this list for those two characters that is being overlooked, but there were some other characters listed who people have just not paid attention to. And one of those characters is Sinestro. Now, of course, Sinestro, you're talking about first appearance, you're talking about out of a lot of people's price range, but the point of this list is we're, sh we're trying to show you gettable books. We want every book on this list to be one that you can obtain. Uh, now, it may be varying price points, but they want them to be books that you can access, and we want them to be books that have meat on the bone. This is a buy list for the future. So one thing to pay attention to is Sinestro's solo series in the New 52. Now, there's a lot of variants for that, but those variants were variants of the month. So it was like, oh, the, the Harley Quinn variants or the Looney Tunes variants or, you know, the, the Batman 66 variants. But issue number one had a one in 25 incentive. And this is a below ratio selling book that isn't very plentiful. It's not one you find everywhere. Um, so we've seen this with DC New 52s that these incentives can take off. This is one I would pay attention to, especially judging from my knowledge of Green Lantern. When I look at like where they're going to go with this series, I think clearly um, we're going to end up getting some Yellow Lantern stuff, which is right when that solo series starts. Uh, so I would be very bullish and be on the lookout for that one. If you can grab that one cheap, I'd grab it. So at the beginning of the show for number 10, we talked about those before Watchmen incentives. Here at number six, we're talking about those Emerald Warriors incentives. Yeah, and now you may be like, what? But this is, again, playing on the last thing that we talked about. Um, I'm going to give you a little little secret here. If you're not familiar with the Emerald Warrior set, one of the best 12-issue sets, if you like Green Lantern stuff, great read on top of it. Um, the incentives. There are 12 incentives. Uh, it, it, this series came out in, like, 2010, 2011. Um, they were a decade ahead of the times with their selection of of variant cover artists uh my favorite run of this is 10 through 12 where you've got um you know you've got clayton crane philippe massafara um uh you've got uh just an incredible group of, of artists throughout this throughout alex gardner throughout this uh run and what this is focusing on is guy gardner taking over his role as the leader of the green lantern corps and the biggest thing about that is we know that Guy Gardner and Kilowog were two of the characters mentioned within the uh, kind of like information solicit put out on this new HBO Max series. Guy Gardner and Kilowog are, are the two characters predominantly featured. They are the Emerald Warriors. They're predominantly featured in, in this series. There is also an amazing Kilowog solo variant by Philippe Massafar. I, that's something I've never seen anywhere else. And it's an incredible artwork says Kilowog down the side. It's definitely one to be on the lookout for. Um, and these are all dirt cheap incentives. People don't pay attention to these. They're one in 10 incentives, um, but they're not plentiful. They, you know, you search around the internet, you're going to see some on eBay and you're going to see some on eBay cheap, but there are going to be certain issues like the Kilowog one. You're going to have a hard time finding. It's not readily available everywhere. And I think when, if these characters pop the way that I expect them to pop, the attitude of Guy Gardner, the hilarity of, 
and kind of trustworthiness of Kilowog. Um, I, I really think that these are going to be popular characters. The show is going to be extremely popular and people are going to be looking for books to pop. And it's tough when the first appearances go for so much. Now, of course, we've talked about Kilowog's first appearance with Green Lantern Corps 201. That's one of Brian and I's probably, I would say, top favorite back issues to buy right now. But if you've already got that and if Guy Gardner's first appearance is out of your price range, even though we've talked about that on this show, um, this is a, a series of books I would be on the lookout for. Those incentives are underpriced, and some of them are definitely due to spike. Then coming in at that number five spot, we get that Justice Society of America, number 77. <laughs> now, Justice Society 77 is one of those rare books, Brian, that we're putting on a top 10 list that I think uh, you can be bullish on, that I think you can be speculative towards. It's not a first appearance. It's not a variant. There's not even some super reader buzz in this book. So what is this book? Well, this is some of the most famous and iconic cover art really throughout the DC Comics history. Um, this is Alex Ross doing the JSA and he did one cover for each of the predominant members of the JSA. If you've been watching Stargirl on the DC Universe app or the CW channel, you have seen uh, that these covers have been used as the banners that are in the JSA headquarters uh, adorning uh, the banners behind each of their individual chairs at, at their table. Um, so this one features Alan Scott. And again, Alan Scott is a character who is going to be predominantly featured on this HBO show. So when you start looking at Alan Scott, you start saying, well, where can I look for money to invest? This is a golden age character that I mean, I can't, the average person that it's going to be tough. That's a tough flip to try. Golden to age requires a golden goose sometimes. <laughs> right. And, and I don't even know how much like, and I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the golden age guru, right? This is not a question for me. I'm not one of the golden guys on comic core. Uh, I don't know that golden age books really are affected that much by like TV shows and movies. Like, I don't know if, if that's really the market for, for those. So, but one thing we know is the modern market is volatile as hell and it will move when things with the TV shows happen. So, and we're always looking for those kind of what we like to call alternative investments. Like if that's out of your budget, this is something to pay attention to. And you can see the same returns on this kind of stuff that you can uh, in, an, in a larger investment. Um, and the beauty of these is, you know, a lot of times you can get quantity on these, you know, you can put together a stock. So, and you got time. Some of these, you're gonna see some of these Green Lantern prices spiking right now. Some of these prices are out of this world. You know, don't pay that high dollar for the Jessica Cruz Simon Baz. If you wait uh, a couple weeks after this announcement, these prices will drop some. Then the next one we have coming at that number four spot is that Aquaman number 57. Yeah, and of course, this is from the 2016 run, the current run, and we're taking it back to, to future state, and we are talking about the future uh, Aquaman, of course, Andy Curry, the female Aquaman, the daughter of Aquaman and Mara, who is born right here in this issue. Uh, great uh, cover B for this one, regular uh, available cover price. This was a hot book though. When this book came out, this was a Bolo Show book. We were talking about this one. People were uh, specking on this book hard. And it's it's like everything else with like modern collecting. It's like people forget. So they jumped on this one. They were like, oh, this is going to be a big deal. It was a $10 book. And then everybody moved on. And now it's back to a cover price book. It's still available some places for cover price. And with Andy Curry being the Aquaman and Future State, I think it's one that uh, people should pay attention to. And today, at least, at least what I'm seeing the initial news, the way people are reacting to it, uh, Brian, people are heavily reacting to that Wonder Woman news, and I feel like overlooking some of the other characters. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the other characters and some other programming and some future shows. We are definitely, Future State is something we are going to talk about over the next couple months. But this was one I wanted to drop right now and get it out there because I think people have kind of forgotten about it. And number three, this is another one that was hot years ago, but we talk about how the spec cycle comes back around. But here's someone that hasn't come around yet, but those new 52, those free comic book day, the store variants are worth picking up as well. Right, yeah. So the book, this book is popular right now because it's the first appearance of Simon yeah. Bass, but people aren't differentiating between the two. And you're seeing a lot of people saying things like, when they put the regular ones up that just have the free white box, they say unstamped. And people think that like what you want is that. But here's the thing, when they say stamped, what they mean is when free comic book day first started, you had that white box, it said free. Yeah, it was, everyone had their store stamp in that white window. Right, a literal stamp. They would literally get an ink stamp made with their store logo and they would stamp their logo in that white 
window as an advertising tool. And over time, what ended up happening when certain books would pop, like that 2007 uh, Amazing Spider-Man, that was the first appearance of Jackpot. That book, if it was stamped, would go far less than if it was unstamped. The Archie, the Archie Afterlife had some of those too. Yes, yes. So what that ended up causing is stores to stop stamping. But stores like my LCS, Heroes Aren't Hard to Find in Charlotte, North Carolina, who when it comes to free comic book day books, they order so many, they do a huge event for free comic book day. The whole city comes out. And then they like to have backstock of free comic book day books to give away at like Heroes Convention in the summer and things like that. So they order heavy on free comic book day books. And if you ordered, I believe it was more than a thousand of this book, you could put an advertisement in the place of that free white box for your store. So the Heroes one advertises, Heroes aren't hard to find the store, it advertises the Heroes convention. Um, and again, because they're limited to like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand of each cover. I mean, this is a book, this free comic book day book is a book that there's probably what, Brian, like 250,000 copies out there. And that's why like you're seeing the price of Simon Baz be less than the price of Jessica Cruz. Um, Simon Baz's first appearance is free comic book day book selling for about 15 to 20 versus Jessica Cruz's issues going for 30, 35. And the interesting thing enough is uh, Green Lantern Zero, the origin of Simon Baz is selling for about 20 to 25. So slightly more than the first appearance, yeah, which especially is the, the variant for that one. Yeah. Yeah. The variant and the combo pack are out of this world. Um, and those, that's just unheard of, right? When in the world do you ever see an origin issue sell for more than a first appearance, but that's indicative of a print run. So that's where we're saying, then you got to get smart. Uh, if all of these are going to be sold for the same price, I'm buying the store variant ones. And there's, I've seen like four or five, I'm sure there's more um, different stores and I would grab those. And the thing about it is, a lot of people don't keep these books in good shape. They didn't care about them. They tossed them around. They read them. They gave them away. They didn't bag and board them. So if a store printed up a thousand, how many are in existence uh, with that cover? Maybe, you know, 600, 700. Um, that makes a limited book. So, you know, this is a book with obstacles. It's a tough book. And if you're going to, so if you're going to look for books, I would say high grade and high grade with that store moniker on it. It doesn't matter which store, whatever store. Um, that's what I would be paying attention to. So that's just, you know, again, another, another function of this list, trying to educate and show people uh, a different way to invest. Then coming in at that two spot, we got another two for for you. We're talking about that Green Lanterns number 40 and 41 variant set. Yeah, this is one I could almost be mad for my personal speculative needs that I'm giving away to the public. But this, to me, is a monster waiting to happen. This is the, the Miles and Gwen covers. Uh, if you've seen these covers, uh, you know, just in absolute incredible, incredible work. Uh, you know, you're really highlighting the, the, the uh, love affair of Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz, which I have zero doubt will be one of the center storylines of the HBO Max television show. And because of that, it's going to make people kind of, people may not even be aware that that's part of the story. So once that happens, they're going to kind of look, uh, you look at the popularity of all the, of those like Miles and Gwen Kiss issues. Now, granted, there's some interracial things that play into that. But here, you're, you're still getting, um, you know, a, a, a Muslim character, Hispanic character. It's still, um, you know, and regardless, that's not, we don't want to lean on those things. But there, this is just beautiful cover art. Um, the, this is issue 40 and 41. Um, so not issue one. You're going to see it drop down. This is basically your readers were the ones paying attention to this. And this plays into what we talked about, Brian. DC cover Bs, we said, you got to be bullish on these beautiful cover Bs because you just never know what's going to spike them. And I think this TV show is really going to spike these issues. So if you can find these for a cover price or even a couple dollars more, I'd be grabbing these because these, this set already, already can sell for $70 in a set. People don't realize that. It can already claim big money, um, but it can also be found for cover price because people just don't know. Then coming in at the number one spot, we get that Green Lantern's Rebirth number one variant. Right. So here we're talking about a $2 book for you in the number one spot. This is the uh, first cover of, of Jessica Cruz as a full-on Green Lantern. Uh, and it seems kind of crazy because she's on so many covers, but this is it. 
Um, this uh, white background, Alex Garner cover, you get to kind of see back to back, Simon Baz, full costume, Jessica Cruz, full costume. Yeah, it's highly printed. White covers make it tough. I don't know if, 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 you, if you were they in the color. A lot of those white covers had a lot of color rub issues. That's right. That's what I was going to bring up. If you were in the comic game when those dropped, those were tough nine eights. Those, uh, a lot of us got a lot of those Batman covers, Flash covers, and thought, okay, we're going to flip these graded. The Wonder getting, Woman art germ. Yeah, getting a bunch of nine six and nine fours back. Uh, that color rub was rough. So um, that's one to pay attention to. And this is, again, the, the, one of the best keys to this list is the fact that these books are accessible. So, yeah, this is like a $2 book, but this is one I think has $10 to $15, possibly $20 potential, especially if these characters become cult popular. Here's the thing, like, the only introduction of Green Lantern to the mainstream masses is that Ryan Reynolds movie, which most people don't like, and that movie was so long ago, a lot of the younger generation, my youngest brother, my kids, they haven't seen that movie, so they have no... No tie to Green Lantern. They don't know. They don't know anything about this character. And Green Lantern is a character that is beloved to Brian and I. The Green Lantern mythos. We animated we're, movies are awesome, and that Cartoon Network animated series. Absolutely, we and we're huge fans of, of the, these properties. So we be, already believe that this is going to get popular. But when you're trying to project the popularity, you have to project it upon an audience that has never been exposed to it. That's the key. That was the key for Mandalorian. Um, obviously, we all knew about Bounty Hunters. That wasn't a surprise, but it caught your wife off guard it caught it caught your buddy who doesn't fuck with comics off guard uh and when that happened uh it that kind of threw everything uh into the stratosphere that it's in now i think that this green lantern television show has the potential with hbo budgeting uh with the storylines and it looks like they're gonna go with mark Igenheim at the helm of the guy who has really done everything for the cw um i'm i'm really excited about this and this is a great, this is a great one right here. Accessible, cheap, and has merit. So there it is, guys. Those are 10 DC back issues. We like to keep them themed. And now we even tightened that theme up and went DC last week. We went champions. But also, like he said on this channel, we have that top five Green Lantern back issues video. If you check it out, we'll put a link to that in the description. This is Brian Jack with Subman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Later.